Good morning. In this video, I'm going to talk about safety relating to turning a spindle on the lathe. Recently, there's been some YouTube videos and some videos on Facebook depicting injuries and accidents that have happened when turning a spindle. Now, my message to you is you have to be safe all the time. Turning a spindle can be one of the easiest and most enjoyable things to do. Now don't be complacent and think that accidents can't happen when you're turning a spindle. Now I'll do a little spindle turning in a second. Now I have a very well equipped shop. I have just about every woodworking and wood turning tool I could ask for. So when I step in front of my table saw, my chop saw, my band saw, I always think, is this operation safe? Do I need to use another tool? Uh, do I need to ask for some advice? And if you're a new woodworker or wood turner, you need to do the same thing. How can this tool hurt me? Well, that's a rather blunt way to put it, but how can the lathe hurt you? Well, you can get caught up into it with long sleeves, so I need to lose this shirt. I've got my key to my shop here around my neck, so I need to lose that, because that wouldn't be good. And a number of other things can happen when you're turning a spindle. You may need to use a face shield. I don't always use a face shield, but if I'm turning really fast and something comes off of a small splinter of wood, that can cause some serious injury. So those are questions you need to ask yourself. I got a dog about a year ago, and sometimes you hear my dog in the background shaking his little bells. Uh, or making noise and yesterday I actually did this entire video and Coco was making so much noise I had to redo it. But since I've got my little dog I'm very careful about putting tools on the bedways of my lathe. A year or so ago a tool dropped off my uh, my lathe and I was wearing flip-flops in the summertime. No, 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 you shouldn't ever do that you'll end up in the emergency room like I did getting stitches. Now if that same tool lands on my little uh, dog, it could blind her, it could, it could kill her. Okay? Uh, here's a skew chisel, and that's pretty much like a knife. I don't want that to drop on her. So lately I've been very aware of safety just because my dog's in the shop. So first of all, I'm going to clean off all the clutter from the bedways and clear up this surface. Now I've taken off my jewelry, my watch, I've taken off my lanyard with my key, I put on my short sleeve smock here. Here's a tip. Ordinarily I don't wear this unless I'm demonstrating someplace. I try to keep this clean. When I'm in my shop, I wear this a lot. What this is is a canvas welder's jacket that I picked up for $22, $23 at our local industrial supply shop. The brand is BSX if you want to look for this particular coat. It had long sleeves on it and I just cut them off because usually it's just too hot in your shop to wear a bunch of stuff but this is a really good cheap alternative and it buttons all the way up to the neck so there's a tip of the day. We'll get rid of that. Now we're talking about turning a spindle. That's a spindle. With the grain running the length of your bed weighs. This bowl would be an example of cross grain work. Okay, the grain's running in that direction perpendicular to the ways of your bed. Okay, we're not going to do that today. We're talking about spindles. This is actually a store-bought spindle I had for a project I was working on, so I'm going to set that aside. Now oftentimes when I start a new turner on the lathe, I usually get a branch just like this from a tree. And this is just from my firewood pile. It's nothing special. It's a willow branch. I'm not going to make a project out of it, but it's good to practice with because it's just firewood. Now, here's something that I would recommend you never do. Attach this to your lathe with a faceplate. Let me be clear. I would recommend never doing this. Let me relate an accident that happened. When and where, not important. This person was a new turner, turning too fast, put a face plate into the end of a log into end grain. End grain isn't great for holding a screw. 
okay? And what happened in this particular situation, the lathe was set at too high an RPM. And a lot of times, I'll just turn my lathe all the way down to zero and, and ramp up from that speed. So we have a faceplate on here, and this individual didn't have the, the tailstock brought up securely. That lathe started to be out of balance, the screws broke loose, and I've got one screw in here to illustrate this. And this log was turning like a cam in your automobile, off center. This came loose and went about 20 feet up into the air on, the, on a wall in this particular shop. This could have killed somebody. So again, let me repeat, I would never put a faceplate on the end grain in the log like this. Let me show you the proper procedure. Now what I've got in the headstock of my lathe is a spur drive. And I've got a 3 8 inch spur drive for smaller work. This is my jumbo spur drive if I'm uh, turning something really large between centers. Okay, and we can take this and drive this into the um, end grain there with a hammer, which works. I would not recommend bashing it into the head drive because that may damage your bearings. Let me show you what I do. So I'm going to just center this kind of by eye, bring my tailstock up, lock it down, and sometimes you can, you can kind of get an idea of where you need to be centered. You need to change that a bit. I'm going to start tightening my tailstock quill into the end grain on this side. I'm taking my Tommy bar, which is a nice piece of rebar, nice and heavy with a handle in it. And I'm putting that in my headstock, which you can't see. It's hollow. And I'm simply going to drive that in. Now I did that before in a video and somebody commented, well, you're going to ruin the ball bearings in your live center. Okay, this is a $30 or $40 item and I'm taking the chance there. I just wouldn't beat it the other direction because if you ruin the ball bearings in your headstock, you got real problems. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to cinch it up a little bit more. Something else you can do, especially with end grain, lock my headstock there and I'm going to just twist that and it's going to drive into the end grain just a little bit more. So I'll tighten that up. I wear this when I turn pens. Because if a pen blank splinters and hits you in the eye, you're in serious trouble. So I'm going to wear this because what I want to do eventually is to get this up to, up to speed. Now let me show you something on this particular log. Okay, this is a spindle roughing gouge. All right, only for spindle work, not for bowls or cross grain work. Um, there's a really good article that just came out in Wood Turning Magazine, the, the British magazine on the spindle gouge and other spindle tools. A very good article. Um, it's okay because the, the grain is running in this direction, but what do we have here? We have a little branch, and that branch is coming directly out, which means that is end grain, not side grain. Okay, so I may take that down with a, a larger bowl gouge. Let me just do a little bit of turning on this. Get my lathe going. Get my face shield on. Now this is the area that branch is coming out. So I'm going to use my 5 8 inch bowl gouge on that. It's a lot safer than using the spindle roughing gouge because that really is end grain. Now that took care of that little branch very well. In fact, I'm not even sure where it is. It's, it's totally gone. And you could probably use the spindle roughing gouge from now on. One of the areas that you can get in trouble with 
with your spindle roughing gouge is on this corner or this corner. And I like to sharpen mine just directly straight across. I don't put a sweep on these at all. Uh, that's nice for putting a little tenon on the end of that or some, uh, you know, like a flat area. And then you turn your tool totally on its side. A little bit more turning. And I'm going to turn the speed up just a little bit on this because I'm getting it down to round. Now, I turned it up to the point it was vibrating. Some people will advocate going past that vibration point and, and the lathe will stop vibrating. I don't think that's a good idea. So, I've turned it back down a little bit. It's not vibrating. Now here's another point I'll make about being in the line of fire in that danger zone. Something comes off the lathe that's going to come right at me or go that direction and hit my camera. So we can simply get out of the line of fire by turning with that opposite hand. And I just had a video uploaded on that. You can check that out, turning with your opposite hand. And that allows me to get out of the line of fire. So there we go. Changing hands allowed me to go to the side and have the shavings go in that direction or in that direction depending on which hand I'm turning. Let me leave you with one final thought. Now this little strip of metal that I'm showing you used to be round. It used to be my wedding band. And I wore that for 30 or 35 years and I was coring some wood and a bowl blank from the middle of my coring came off and landed on my ring finger there and smashed this wedding band, which is now just flat. <laughs> but it's not a good idea to wear rings. You can, you can lose a finger and bad things can happen. So you never know when an accident's going to happen. Safety is anticipating those situations that something bad can happen and not do them. Use a different tool. So thank you once again for tuning in and please be safe. And if you have any questions about safety, you can contact me. And I've got a couple other videos uh, on my YouTube channel on safety. So be safe. See you later.